Hi there Keystone owners. Today in your 2019 Keystone Montana, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kodiak's disc brake system. Along with that, we're going to be using Hydrastar's actuator and line kit. And your Montana here is a big load that you're going to be hauling behind your truck. And with big loads comes great momentum. And we need this momentum to stop whenever we need it to come to a light or if there's somebody in front of us. And in emergency situations, this is the most important. With a electric brake set that comes on it, the system is going to help stop it. It's going to perform its needs. But if you want to maximize the safety and smoothness of your Montana here, I highly recommend going to a hydraulic disc brake system. It's going to decrease your stopping distance because we're going to have more surface area on our rotors, which is going to grab better and allow our trailer to stop in a much shorter distance than we would before. And it's also going to be smoother because we have a hydraulic actuator that evenly distributes the fluid to all the brakes at the same time. And it applies them in a more natural fashion that feels like you're stopping on your car. With your electric brakes, you have to set your adjustment and once it applies, it happens very abruptly. And if you've got it set too high, you really feel it in the back. With these, it applies it a little bit more gradually so it feels much smoother and more natural when you're coming to a stop. This is more comfortable for you and your passengers and the decreased stopping distance is going to increase the safety for you and your family as well. And this is what your disc brakes look like when they're installed. These are gonna be a replacement for your existing drum assemblies or if you already had disc brakes, you can use these as well. They're designed for 7,000 pound axles and they have an eight on six and a half bolt pattern. Upgrading from drum brakes to disc brakes is gonna give you smoother brake operation. That's also going to decrease your stopping distance because you're gonna have more surface area to grab onto. Since this is a hydraulic system, the actuator is also going to proportionally apply the brakes properly so it's evenly distributed among them and it's gonna be very smooth unlike your electric brakes where once that is applied, the braking happens instantly. This is going to gradually bring those on so it's gonna feel more natural just like you're driving your car. Included with your kit, you're gonna get a set of rotors, calipers, and caliper brackets. What you will need to complete the installation is a set of bearings as well as some grease, which we all have at eTrailer.com here. So if you follow along with me here, we've got a tandem axle trailer. We're going to be installing them on so you can get as many sets as you need for the amount of axles you have. Let's get going. We'll begin our installation by getting our RV in the air. We've got ours on lifts here, but at home you could use your leveling jacks or your floor jack to lift it up. And then you always want to make sure you put a jack stand under the frame to ensure that you're not supporting it just by a hydraulic jack. Once you've got it up, you can go ahead and remove your wheels. And that's where we're at right now. And then I'm going to show you how to start getting your old brakes off. The cap located here needs to come off first. And this just taps off. We're using just a dead blow, a rubber mallet or anything like that will work fine. And we're just going to kind of tap it away from the face there. And you'll see it starts to kind of rock out. And then it'll just pop off there. Once you've got that out of the way, there's a clip located behind it. We'll need to pop this out. A flat bladed screwdriver works pretty good for getting it popped out. And to help minimize the mess, I like to use a pair of needle nose to take it the rest of the way off. Below that we have our nut. And we're just going to use a pair of channel locks now. Just grab onto that nut. It's not very tight, so we can just work it off of there. And then we're also going to set this down. All the parts that we've taken off so far, we are going to be reusing. So that's why I've got a little napkin sat down so we can set these parts on there. Once our nuts out of the way, there's a washer and our outer bearing located here. They typically come off together and I found the easiest way to get those off is I just take my screwdriver and set it here on the end to catch the bearing and washer. And you can just start pulling your hub assembly off because it will come off of there now, but we're just gonna get it off just far enough to slide those off of there. And then we can set those down. We're then just going to prepare another spot because we got a lot of grease right there. And we don't want to make a mess because our whole assembly now is just going to slide straight out. We'll then set it down and push it to the side. Now that we've got that out of the way, we do need to get our backing plate with our brakes off to help minimize that mess. 
we are going to get some of this grease out of the way first. And we actually could see here on this one when we removed it, we had some grease here on this back side. And this is the other side of our grease seal. You should not have grease in here. So there was a leaking grease seal on this particular wheel here. You can even see some of the grease that came out and started to get on our magnet. And this is what actually grabs to apply the brakes. And if you get grease on there, its properties of grabbing are greatly reduced. But we're gonna be replacing the whole thing anyway. So now that we've got all that grease out of the way, we're gonna use our 15 millimeter socket here to remove the nuts that hold the backing plate on. There's a total of five. Once you've got all the nuts removed, the assembly will slide off, but it's still attached by the wiring on the back side. So we're just gonna grab our cutters and make that snip. And here we can see the wiring there. We're just gonna snip it right about here. The wiring can be left in the vehicle. We're gonna be disconnecting this at the front of our motorhome, so it's just gonna be dead wire in here. But this way it's here if you ever need it for any additional accessories or maybe you wanted to switch back, whatever. So we're just gonna fold it over and poke it right back in. The assembly just slides off. And we're just gonna set that aside as well. Next, we're going to install our bracket. And we want the bracket where the caliper attaches to be towards the rear of our trailer. So we're just gonna slide it on. The holes are only gonna fit into certain slots. So you're pretty much gonna have it in the rear here or you're gonna have it in an obviously wrong position because it will fit this way, but we don't want it to go that way. We want it to go towards the back. So we're just gonna set that on the studs and then use the hardware that we had previously removed to re-secure it. We'll then just tighten them back down. And then torque them to the manufacturer's specifications. We can now start preparing our new rotor assembly so we can slide it on. We need to pack our bearings and then get them in and put our grease seal on. We're going to do the inner bearing first, which is going to be your larger bearing. Now, rather than reusing the bearings that we had in our old drum assembly, we are going to be replacing those. You can get new bearings as well as your seals here at eTrailer.com, and I highly recommend that because these rotors come with the races pre-installed. So we want to have new bearings in there so they wear properly and match the race. If we put our old bearings in here, they are worn to the races in the old hub and they may not wear properly inside of this new race. Next, we're gonna be packing our wheel bearings. You may wanna consider wearing some gloves with this as some people do report that it irritates their skin. I've not had any issues with it, so I'm not gonna be wearing any, but you just wanna be cautious and know your own body. Before we are upgrading to a, a high performance grease, so it's not gonna be that same red in color, that's why we cleaned up the old one. So we're gonna take our bearing here, we're just gonna drop it down into our bearing packer. We do have bearing packers available here at eTrailer.com if you need one. And we're just going to ensure that we've got grease packed through our bearing. And one of the things we're looking for really is down in between each bearing here on the back side. As we pack it, that grease should push up from between those bearings. We want to make sure it's got it inside of that inner race there. And you can see there, the grease is starting to pass through our bearings now. So we know that we are well packed on the inside. We can then take our packed bearing, we're going to drop it down inside of our rotor. It's only going to really fit one way, fit down in there due to the taper. We'll then take our grease seal. This is going to sit on the back. The spring here is always going to go towards the inside, inside of our rotor there. And we're just going to line that up. Now at this point, we're going to drive the seal in. I recommend using a seal driver because you can see here there's a slight taper and this actually needs to go down further than flush. Your typical seals usually go flush on most of your automotive vehicles, but on these we need to go deeper. But what we can use like we do on those automotive vehicles is grab ourselves a block of wood. This is a great way to get it started and ensure you get it drove in straight as it's going to go all the way across the entire diameter of our bearing. And then we're just going to knock it down in there straight. So we're just going to periodically check ourselves, making sure that we're going in straight. Now, once you've got it down flat, it does seem to go in further. We need to go down past the point of that taper there. 
So we got a seal driver that's the correct diameter for our seal here and we're just going to continue tapping it in. Now that we have our seal fully installed, our rotor assembly will slide back into place. We want to be careful not to nick our seal as we're sliding it on. Just go on as straight as possible. And then it'll just slide right up into place. Make sure that our seal is riding on the sealing surface. Everything looks good. We're all the way in. We'll now pack our outer bearing. That's going to be our smaller one here. And then we can reinstall that in reverse order of how we removed it. First, we'll clean off the grease from our washer, our nut, and our nut lock right here to ensure because we're going to be reusing all three of those. So now we're just going to take our bearing that we've packed and we're going to slide it in the outside there. We're going to follow that up with our washer and our nut. And that's not all the way in there, but that's okay. When we go to draw our nut down, that's going to pull it in. And we're actually going to be using the nut to ensure that it gets fully seated. We're then just going to tighten this guy down. Once we get in there a little bit further, I like to spin the rotor while I'm spinning it. Just to ensure that we've got our bearings all the way seated in there. This also helps get some of that grease from the impact worked around on the races and things. And I like to go nice and snug on the first pass here. And that'll just ensure that they are all the way seated. We'll then just back our nut off. And it's completely loose now. You can see it's just on there, we're just going to bring it up until it touches. And then we're going to reinstall our lock. Sometimes if this uh, doesn't want to quite go back on, you may need to slightly change the position of the nut. But it looks like we got her to slide on right there, so we're good to go. At this point now, we're going to use the grease fitting here to finish packing the rest of the cavity inside of our rotor assembly. So we're just gonna take our grease gun here and then just fill it up until we start to see some grease push back out of our bearings. If you need a grease gun, you can get one here at eTrailer.com. This is the exact same one that you can get here on our website. It's great for just your standard duty grease gun, meeting your applications of filling your hubs and things like that. And once you start to see it push grease out just like it is here, that is plenty of grease. We are fully packed and starting to push it out. We can take our cap and put it back over and tap it back on. I did wipe the grease out from inside the cap as well to get rid of all that old red grease. I'm just lightly tapping it on there until it's fully seated all the way around. We can then grab our caliper Make sure that the pads are fully seated. They do come installed, but sometimes the pad falls out of its space. It just pushes in there. And you want to check these little spacers right here, the slides. We want to make sure that those are as far towards the outside here as possible because they like to hang up when you go to put the caliper on and have a hard time lining your bolts up. So we're just going to put a piece of our tool on here just to squeeze and push that a little bit towards the outside. We'll then take our bolts and we're going to slide them into place because our upper bolt we're not going to be able to get to be able to slide it in after we get it into position. Once you've slid them through, you are going to have to kind of just pull them out just so they don't catch on anything when we're sliding it into place. It'll just then slide right over our rotor. It is a nice snug fit, so you might have to kind of Wiggle it back and forth just a little bit in order to get it to set down on there all the way. Once you've got your caliper slid all the way on there, start your bolts. You want to make sure you get each one started. Once you've got each one started, we can then tighten them down with our 13 millimeter socket or wrench. After you've got them snugged down, we're going to grab our torque wrench again and torque these to the specifications found in your instructions. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we've got one installed, we're going to repeat the exact same procedures on the one on the other side of our axle and for any remaining axles that we have. And now that we've got all of our calipers and our disc brake assemblies installed here, we need hydraulic pressure to operate these. So we do have a line kit and a high pressure hydraulic actuator that we're going to be installing. So now I'm going to get the lines run and then we'll show you how to get the brakes bled. We're now back at the furthest brake caliper from our actuator. So since we mounted the actuator on the driver's front side, we're at the passenger rear. So that's going to be the furthest distance away. This is where we're going to want to start to bleed our brakes. And you're going to want an assistant to help you when doing this. They can either pull the breakaway switch pin to activate the brakes, or they could, you can hook your truck up and you can use your brake actuator's manual slide to turn it on. We've gone ahead and our assistant went ahead and turned it on for us. So go ahead, Jonathan, go ahead and turn it on. So we activated our actuator. We're now just going to loosen the bleeder screw here. And you can see the fluid coming out, going down. We're then gonna shut the valve. Cause we only wanna let so much come out and we want it to be nice and clean like this. You can turn it off, Jonathan. And there's no air. You see, this is the air coming back up. What we were looking for is when fluid was coming out, we were looking for the presence of bubbles in the stream coming out. If you have bubbles, you need to continually bleed it until you get a nice solid stream like this. Once you've got that at this caliper, we're just gonna move on to the next caliper and the next one and the next one and the next one until they're all bled and there's no air in any of them. When bleeding your brakes, you wanna make sure your cap is off and we do it in short bursts, just like we did back there. We only bled out a little bit and then we closed it right back off because the reservoir here only holds so much fluid and we don't want it to be completely drained out or else we have to start all over again. So just do it in short bursts and then your assistant can be up here and make sure that the fluid level remains, to remains topped up. You wanna make sure that you're using dot three or dot four brake fluid with your actuator. We're gonna be using dot three today. And that completes our installation of Kodiak's disc brake system.